here's another bonus video where I'm going to go through some circuits. Some will be very important for answering paper 2, some paper 1 as well. But we're going to look at four facts. Focusing more on potential different now and same also we're going to look at series and parallel circuits. So if we're going to start with a series circuit. What does on series mean? On series mean there's only one way for these uh, current to flow. Lah. Okay, so maybe I'll have something like that. Maybe I'll... Why don't I make this a little bit out of shape? How about I have another resistor there? Hey, hey. Hey, actually this one can just pull over. Nah, out of shape. Exams can give you out of shape resistor and they'll... They are basically still the same thing but now shaped differently. So here we have values, 10 ohm, 9 ohm, 10, 10, and 9 volts. Remember we talked about potential drops a lot? We can actually see it here. If there is no internal resistance, then the battery, which has an EMF of 9 volts, we should measure 9 volts as well across both ends of the battery. Yep, 9 volts. And no matter how I move along this wire at the side, there is no potential change or potential drop in this wire because no components ma. So up to this point, I'll still get 9 volts. Okay, let me turn on the current in the correct direction. There we go. Now, what about these two? If you had guessed correctly, if they have the same resistance, each of them should have a drop off what is half of 9 volts. 4.5? Let's check and see. So here to here should be 0, no change. But as you go across, Oh, between, across this uh, resistor, there's a 4.5 volt drop. What about this other resistor here? Okay, so we have the top, and then the other side, also 4.5 volts. How about the whole thing there? Across both resistors, 9 volts. Across both resistors is also the same as across the battery in this case. Okay, so that's what I mean by potential drops. Each time you go past something, it's dropping. Now, what if the one resistor is double the other? So if I click on this, I can change the value. Let me change to 20. Wow, now the current is very slow already. Uh, the current throughout the whole thing is the same, by the way. Quick check, reminder. 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Okay, good. Now, if we have a drop from, let's say, this part, drop all the way down until the end, it's still 9 volts. So yes, you have increased resistance, but the total potential that the battery has is only 9 volts. So total drop can only, the biggest drop can only be 9 volts. But now, if I measure the drop between this 20 ohm resistor, it's not going to be 4.5 anymore. It's going to be a little more because it has more resistance. So if you look, it's, oh my, 6 volts. This is like what the ratios we're talking about now. 6 volts dropping here, and how about the other one? One end and the other end. 3 volts drop on the other. So yes, the idea is for uh, components, they kind of share the supply PD. See, 3 volts here, right? 3 volts plus 6 volts. I think this one was 6 volts. 3 volts plus 6 volts, 9 volts. So they're kind of sharing it out. Uh, I give you a bit, I give you a bit kind of thing. But how much they each of them get depends on their resistance. Okay, so that's what it means by sharing out the supply potentials all divided up between each component like this resistor, this resistor, and things like that. The other fact that we want to look at is related to parallel circuits. So how to do a parallel circuit? You want to build... Hmm, you want to give it two possible roads for the current to flow. For example, something like this. Ay, ay, ay. We make the first road like normal. Okay, we remember we did this in the current demo. And we have another road down there. See, the current's already flowing, right? Let me do this for you. Watch the current. Keep an eye on it for me, will you? And then I build the second one. Now the current is 0 0.9. Oh, I connect like that. Nothing's moving on this track yet. Wait till I connect this line. Let's see what happened to the current. Okay, now we connect it up. Oh, it's moving and 
Zero point nine. Zero point nine. Zero point nine. One point eight. Oh. So this zero point nine didn't change, but this one point eight did change. Because by connecting resistors in parallel, I reduce their effective resistance. Go and calculate it. Lah. Uh, I think the values are here. Yeah. 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 to the power of negative 1, those kind of stuff. So anyway, we'll keep an eye on the current. Current here is 1.8 and half here before they join together. 0 0.9, 0 0.9. I'll just keep this there for now. Now the voltmeter part. Let's check out the voltage. When I say the voltage drop is the same across each uh, component, what I mean is this. Okay, that's the other fact. Potential drop across each row is the same. So here you have road 1 and another road for the current to flow, road number 2. Let's see. Current is flowing this way, conventional current. The potential drop across the battery, firstly, is 9 volts low. You see 9 volts. Okay, okay. So across road 1, the potential drop is also 9 volts. Hmm. What if I do the potential drop across here, the last road? Also 9 volts. That's what it means. Potential drop across each road is the same. What if we change one of these resistors to be hmm, different value? Let's try and see. Ding, 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 ding. Half of it. Now you see the current, they like to, they are flowing faster here and slower here. Makes sense. Less resistance. What about the potential drop now? If we are right and this fact here is correct, we should still have the same potential difference. Let's see for real. The top battery, 9 volts. This one, 9 volts as well. And the one at the bottom, potential drop across it, we measure the voltage, also 9 volts. Now if you're thinking, Miss, how is this possible? Man, because different current, ma. This current here is 1.8. This current here is 0 0.9. It's a little bit different. Current here is 2.7 now. Uh, 1.8 and 0 0.9. So that's what I mean. Current is different, but for real, the potential drop will be the same. Now the last bit before we close this is about batteries. Wow, this one ah, uh, the exam asked very funny, funny thing one. But I thought mm, I'll show you. Otherwise, uh, when you come to the question, you will stand there and be like, uh, how on earth do we think of this? Now, 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 let's use a light bulb because we have seen enough resistors. Okay. Let's say I have a light bulb. We want to see it glow. And... I have my single good old battery. How much is this? 9 volts, right. Okay, good to know. What is the total potential across the light bulb? 9 volts, we know that, right. Total potential across the battery, which is the same here. I can put the thing here, it doesn't matter. 9 volts. Actually, what people do usually is they just put like that lah. Oh yeah, across everything, uh, across the bar, across the battery, same thing. For now, uh, same thing. Uh. What if we put another battery in? Normally, how will people connect battery? If you see in the toys or whatever, they will have two batteries, right? They kind of join both together, tip to tail, tip to tail. Okay, let's try that. So let's break the circuit here. Da -da 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 -da. And I put a 9 volt battery here. What do you think is going to happen to the circuit? Might as well put a current emitter there. Okay, let's see. Connect! Dun, dun. Wow, the light bulb becomes so bright. You kind of have like double the... Double... Doubly high battery voltage. So now if we measure potential difference across here and here... Wow, it's 18 volts. So they added up. Because it's like tail to tip eh. Head to tail, head to tail, connect like that. No? What if you somehow you connect wrong your, your battery and your battery is backwards? For example, like this. What do you think is going to happen? Let's see. Eh? Connect really or nothing happened? No? Eh? Because they are fighting each other. One is trying to push the electron to the left. One is trying to push the electron to the right. So in the end, Nothing changed, no? they fight each other, man. both also 9 volt. Okay, no. So that's one fact on there. Um, ignore the current part as a typo here. It depends, you gotta look at each scenario. But when you connect batteries in series, 
their terminal potential difference either add or minus, depending on how you connect, you connect correct or not. Lo. What if, now this is where it gets a bit, it gets very strange because you never see this in real life. What if you connect batteries in parallel? How would that change? Let's try it. Now this sometimes is a bit hard to do in real life lab, lab but since it's on the simulation, I can just do it and you can see the effects. Okay, I'm lazy to put all the corners, so I'm just going to do like that. Okay, we have our 9 volt battery. First one, good old. Current is 0 0.9 everywhere. Now, I'm going to be a troll and say, what if I connect a parallel battery? We never do this in electronics. You'll find out why. It's kind of useless. Uh, so, potential difference between this side and this side is 9 volts, right? So, we connect another one in parallel means it will be like this. And like this. Okay, eh? potential is still 9 volt. So you basically wasted your energy. You didn't do anything. The battery never add up. It's just the same. Okay. Current, eh, current. Current in the circuit is 0 0.9. But current in this battery is 0 0.5 and 0 0.36. Ha. Huh? Because traffic jam. The battery trying to push all this current. So in this part where it's parallel, the current is smaller. See? 0 0.3, 0 0.5. So got problem there. Lor. Then here is 0 0.9. They add up together. So the current will decrease because now there's two batteries jamming up. Now this final one. What if you really, really very troll uh, or you blur and you connect one of the batteries backwards. So here the positive is here, positive is here. But this one if it's backwards, I rotate it. Oh no, I rotated something else. What do you think is going to happen when I connect this uh, battery, backwards battery in parallel? This one you must guess. Try to think what's going to happen. Hmm. Bet you wouldn't expect this, but this is what's going to happen. 3, 2, 1, connect! Walao eh, what is this? Both battery catch on fire. This is what we call a short circuit, okay? Because the current is like, what's the point in going through the whole circuit when I can just go to the negative of the other battery and then just, oh yeah, what's the point going out, just go back. So the current just go there and the current is too big. <laughs> 4,000 amps again, okay? So this is a short circuit. So when you ever, when, these are the facts. Whenever you connect batteries in parallel, it's useless. We don't do it because number one, the potentials don't add up. And number two, if you connect the positive and negative um, swapped, then it will just short circuit. Okay, so if you see the... Ah, uh, man, I need to break this thing so it's not on fire. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Positive here, negative. But then the positive here, negative. That's what it means. Okay. So hopefully that was helpful in helping you understand a little better how to... Uh, how the potential difference look like in all this stuff. Oh, by the way, potential. If you're curious, right? You want to see. What's the potential difference across here? Negative. Oh, right. Flowing the other way. 0 0.011 volts. The other one? 0 0.011 volts. Okay, this thing is broken already. Basically, you short your battery, your battery died. That's why people say, I have sort already. Uh, sort already your, your battery on fire. So that's all for this one. Um, go and take a good look at these things, play with the thing, play with the simulation, and then, yeah. We'll go on to internal resistance and real life circuits now.